Welcome back, my name's Zach, and thank you so much for watching my introductory video. And you may be wondering why my face looks like a rainbow ghoulastic explosion! Today I'm going to explain how I turned myself into a chromatic ghoul fit with a creepy mouth prosthetic. You know, for eating flesh, honey. If you'd like to see how I created the prosthetic or the teeth, there are links down below to rocket you forward in the video. Beginning with a fresh face, let's balance and protect with NYX's first base primer spray. And this lip balm is everything. Okay, girl. Next, taking NYX's black special effects cream and covering my lips to hide them from the prosthetic. I began with a brush, but there's really no need because, you know, you're blocking out your lips, so feel your Joker fantasy. Go ham! Taking the Ghoul Mouth prosthetic, powdering heavily around the edges to reveal the scope of the prosthetic, and then I just slap off a medical adhesive where needed. This includes your face and prosthetic. After the adhesive is dried clear, begin applying your prosthetic. Take your time. The best trick I've learned is to start from a central anchor point and then roll the prosthetic edges down, placing them last. Powder the adhesive and begin layering that liquid latex, girl. I like to begin prosthetic blending with a heavy coat of latex with like one ply paper towels and patience. Layering process can go on for as long as you like. Building up and blending is important. I do quite a few layers on mine, making sure to address the areas of the prosthetic individually for the blending that they need. You can use other materials for a smoother finish, but I wanted to have lots of texture, so I intentionally chose the paper towel. And as a last step for extra insurance, I heavily powder all over the prosthetic. And now we add the color! Like most of my body paints, the idea is more of a technique and a concept of my artistic expression rather than a meticulous explanation of every brush stroke. Because promotion of artistic freedom, zah! So I begin with a variety of NYX's special effects cream on their duo fiber powder brush. Using creams on a shoe as a base will help lock in the color with powder, keeping me from worrying about the movement as compared with other color mediums. I use a duo fiber brush so I can achieve a very textured and intentionally uneven color placement and feathering. This keeps me from controlling things too much, just, you know, to have fun. 
The color placement is random, but I keep into consideration the high points of my face and make sure to draw them out. As an added layer of depth, I place some water activated body paints gently on top with a C sponge. And to be honest, this was one of the first times I'd ever used a sponge and I about lost my mind that day. It puts so much color and texture in, girl. I was dead. Now I think you know this song. My neck, my back. Don't forget to paint it or you'll look whack. Oh girl, you know, or any other areas of exposed skin. I also use a chip brush to splatter color all over myself to enhance the skin texture even more. And also apparently the wall. <laughs> I snag a combination of NYX's primal colors in hot black and blue to contour my face, aka adding in those shadows that our color foundation naturally flattened out. Now pop the eyes way out with those vivid bright cream colors. I used Love Overdose and Aqua Sapphire. This formula is ghoul proof. Seriously, it goes nowhere. But we're gonna set it using some of the shades from that ultimate eyeshadow palette, which I love. Next up is deepening the hollows of the face with hot black. I wanted to create an illusion of, you know, a heavy angry-ish brow, and the black gave me that deadly depth that I was searching for. I also use a large brush to make sure that the pigment is really diffused, and also, you know, still in charge. The black helps, you know, contrast the eyes and the overall look. Also, in my head, ghouls have, like, gross receding skin around, like, icky black teeth, so hence the black in the mouthical area. At this point, my hair is possessed and bothering me, so I spackled it down with none other than Glitter Spackle, which is just hair gel and glitter. Now, girl, the ooh shiny was real with me today, and I got all set up with NYX's dewy setting spray to prep for their fabulous duochromatic highlighting powder in twilight tint. This is to draw out the high points in our new monster skull. Now, girl, the glow is severe up in here. Now my brows are totally undead, so I'm going in with abstract color application using each of the same colors I did for my eyes. And the finishing touches tying the brows to the lashes is I hit them with that same color mascara in mint julep and coral free. And there you have it, a chromatic ghoul fit for whatever life might be chasing you with. Don't forget to check out the other segments in this tutorial to learn more. Welcome to the Tooth Tutorial. My name is Dr. Daryl B. Payne and I'll be toothstructing you today. Get it? Doctors, dentists, and teeth? No? Okay. Start by kneading and warming up your bakeable polymer clay, simultaneously removing any air bubbles that may also be inside. Take off a grape-sized chunk and roll it into a ball for sizing. This can help you keep your teeth uniform, if you do it for all of your teeth beforehand. The sculpting process has three steps. Roll the tooth into a cone shape, not too thin. Then take the thickest end of the cone, using your index fingers and thumbs, pinch the clay into a nice sized tooth root. Now that you have a basic shape, you can use the surface of your workspace to sharpen the edges before baking. Set the oven to bake. I baked mine at 275, but follow the directions for whatever clay you use. My clay had a 15 minute bake time. Don't forget oven safety! Use protection and always turn the oven off. Now that the teeth are nice and cool, you can optionally sand them for that extra scurry look. Thank you so much for watching this tooth tutorial. Stay tuned for the prosthetic time lapse. Welcome to the prosthetic tutorial. Some things you will need are a plaster cast, flesh colored liquid latex, a dish for that latex, varying paper materials to support the structure of the prosthetic, prosthetic release, aka canola oil for me today, a hairdryer to speed up the process, powder, and some disposable makeup sponges for latex application. Whew, now say that 10 times fast. This tutorial is time-lapse style so you can see as much of the process as possible without having to actually wait like I did. So I'm gonna blend tips and processes together as best as I can. Start by applying your mold release and wiping off the excess. Using multiple layers of liquid latex, I create a custom base for the prosthetic. I start out with multiple layers of latex before adding anything on top of it to avoid the risk of the prosthetic not staying on the mold or holding my face shape. Using one ply of some paper towel, I diffuse the edges, aka rip them off in a general shape of where I want the base of the prosthetic to be. And also, I cut a hole from my mouth so the human in me could like eat drink and breathe. I apply a base layer of liquid latex to stick down the paper and then using a rolling stippling motion with a disposable sponge. From the center out, I place down the paper and seal it in. 
When applying the base of the prosthetic, I try to make sure that it is flat as possible. When working with thicker blending materials, it can easily get very disheveled. For tooth placement, I use a Slupa adhesive to stick them down and with an extra tooth, space them out. Six on top and eventually five on the bottom. Using a three-ply paper towel, I fold it in half for a six-ply and then use a thick unblended edge to create a gum receding ghoul-lack mouth area. I really wanted to use the teeth roots to showcase the dimension of the mouth, so I take the paper and the back of a paintbrush and I generously apply liquid latex to the work area and weave the paper in with the brush back, you know, hitting it with some latex on top as well. I do this both for the gums on the top layer and also on the bottom layer. And I do this after popping the teeth out. This is because like the workspace was really tight and I really wanted to make sure I got the gums very, very dimensional and just like the top. And that's it. You now have a semi-angler fish as mouth that will scare the scales off of any clowns trying to come for you. In our case, chromatic ghouls. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really, really hope you enjoyed. And if you like what you see, feel free to thumbs up this video, comment down below, and subscribe to my channel. If you want to see more of me, follow me under all social media with the username ZachZinga. Until next time, from my face to yours, have a nice day now. Bye!